Hello, and welcome to everyone tuning in. This is your host, Mark Chatterton, with another of my interviews for my Rock Files YouTube channel. As something different, I'm going to be interviewing a book author today, namely Lance Gilbert, an American who is now based in New Zealand. We're going to be talking about his book on Led Zeppelin, and more precisely, whether there is such a thing as the Led Zeppelin curse, as Lance's book is entitled The Led Zeppelin Curse, with the subtitle Jimmy Page and the Haunted Boliskine House. So welcome to the show, Lance. Hey, thank you for having me, Mark. I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to uh, to discuss and uh, certainly field any questions you have about the book. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah. Okay, before we start talking about the book, how, how would you describe what a curse is, first of all? Uh, a curse? Well, I mean, yeah, I suppose that the book definition, a, a, a solemn vow, uh, or utterance to uh, uh, wish harm upon another person or to have uh, a, a malevolent effect on them, I suppose. That would be uh, something along the lines of a, of a textbook uh, curse. Um, and of course, uh, you know, curses take many forms. You have, I come from Boston and you've got, you know, curses in the form of, let's say, a sports team not winning, uh, you know, the World Series or what have you, the curse of the Bambino. Uh, with the Boston Red Sox, um, so it, it can take the take many forms, but uh, certainly it's not a positive thing, and uh, it's someone wishing harm upon someone else or some sort of a dark cloud uh, upon something. Right. So it's it's quite an unusual subject to be writing about in connection with Led Zeppelin, because obviously there's been lots of books over the years about Led Zeppelin, but this is the first time I've, I've come across a book about the Led Zeppelin curse. Could you explain a bit about why you decided to write the book and, and how, how it affects Led Zeppelin as such, or did then? Oh, sure, sure. So, I mean, when I was um, in my early 20s, I, I decided to explore the occult and paranormal and Thought it was interesting, you know, young guys, uh, something edgy and dangerous. Um, and I learned quite a bit. And uh, as a result, um, I came across uh, the Bolskin House, uh, just, you know, internet browsing on, on various paranormal subjects. And um, which saw is the what, connection with Jimmy, what Jimmy Page Payne. owned, owned yeah, for quite a number of years. Fascinating. Yeah. fascinating. And um, I thought, wow. And I kept digging into it. And I said, oh, this, there's a story here. Um, of course, many books written on Zeppelin and Page in the past. So I thought, what what angle or what value could I provide, you know, uh, in addition to everything else out there? And I thought, OK, if I could use my understanding of, of the occult and paranormal and, and interpret to the best of my ability, uh, given the, the shadowy nature of the subject, um, you know, what might have occurred with, with Jimmy Page and, and, and the band itself. And I, I was quite implicit about being speculative uh, most of the way. Uh, I, I included as many provable facts as I could, but, but I was clear that it was, it was mostly speculation um, based, on, based on experience. Uh, yes. So I thought I could write about that and, and see if there was an audience for it. Yeah, and the book has been out about three or four years now, but um, how, how's, what's the re reception been like with it really? Has it been mainly positive or have you had a, a few sort of negative uh, reactions to it? Mark, I'd, I'd say mostly positive, uh, and I, I, I would like to attribute that. I think so, uh, just to the, I, I approached it in a neutral way myself. Um, I did do some research ahead. I, I, was, I was kind of uh, testing the grounds, doing some market research, if you will, uh, putting up Facebook posts um, before I published the book, while I was writing it, just to get a sense of what kind of reception I might get. And I put that in Led Zeppelin, uh, Facebook groups, things of that nature. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to get a sense of how people would respond to it, the fans anyway. And, um, you know, I would say by and large curiosity, uh, people wanted to hear more. Uh, many didn't know about that angle uh, of Zeppelin. They knew of the music, but not the backstory. Um, but there were the skeptics and I, certain categories of fans that would say, look, Jimmy, you know, people that basically worship Jimmy and he can do no wrong. And anyone that could dare have anything negative to say about Jimmy, you know, they just had this reflexive, um, you know, argumentative, you know, anger towards it. And I, I you know, by nature, I'm, I'm never one to argue such things If people get upset. I, you know, just take the high ground. Um, 
but uh, but by and large, a, a very positive, I think, reception to the book. Just cu curiosity, uh, really. And, um, and it seems that people enjoyed reading it. There were those that absolutely did not like it. It was polarizing in many ways, but those were the, the self-avowed skeptics, the people yeah. that immediately said, nope, this can't be true. Um, and, and they didn't even, you know, consider any of it being, you know, true, despite my very neutral stance on it, but that's fine. It makes, makes for good, good, you know, back and forth in regards to yeah, the subject. Yeah, 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 because obviously quite a, a bit of the book, obviously, to begin with, is about Jimmy Page and his relationship with the occultist Alistair Crowley and the fact that he bought this house that Alistair Crowley previously owned up in Scotland in near Loch Ness. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it. Is it Bol Bolskine or Bolskin or? Uh, I, honestly, I've heard it pronounced many ways. But oh, right, I, yeah. I, call it, I call it Boleskin. There Boleskin, are call right. Bolskine. Okay, yeah. yeah I've heard it. But the guy that currently owns it, I've watched quite a few of his videos. He's restoring the house after the two fires. He calls yeah. it Boleskin. I was like, oh, okay, I got it right. Because <laughs> you never know. But I'm not sure how the Scottish pronounce it. It's really their, their backyard. So yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, because obviously, as you mentioned, there were the two fires. Um, I think one was in 2015 and then one 2019. And right. it sort of virtually destroyed the house, but it's been restored now by the, by this trust. And um, you can go and visit it if you arrange with them and so on. So that house also appeared in, in the film, The Song Remains the Same. And Jimmy Page is sitting there um, sort of staring. Uh, so obviously there's a connection there. So how much um, would you say is, this uh, Led Zeppelin curse is to do with Jimmy Page and his, his involvement with Alistair Crowley in the first place? It's a good question. Um, I mean, I think there are two angles on the curse, two trajectories, I, I, you know, popularly. Um, and one is that people say that Jimmy had, um, you know, entered into a pact with um, everyone except John Paul Jones. So he got John Bonham and uh, Robert Plant to, to do a ceremony to ensure their continued fame and fortune. They were already successful. And he said, you know, I'm just starting this, not just starting, but I'm into the, the occult. And I think we can do something to ensure, you know, our mega success, um, if you will. And uh, John Paul Jones supposedly wanted nothing to do with it. Um, and then as a result, of course, they became just, you know, icons, um, but there was a price to pay. Uh, and of course, all the things that happened with the band, um, and then the other curse angle is that, you know, Jimmy had agreed to produce a soundtrack for Kenneth Anger's film, Loose for Rising, um, experimental uh, occult film, you know, short film. And um, he agreed to, you know, produce the music. It was, ooh, I think early 1970s. I, I've done so much research on this, trying to pinpoint exact dates and times. And yeah. it's just uh, quite, it's quite, uh, you know, foggy in that regard. So I'm careful. Not yeah, to I had a look as well. And it was hard to, yeah. to sort of pin down a date and everything. Yeah. All over the place. It, when in doubt, I looked at, you know, okay, six instances of, you know, Jimmy meeting uh, anger in 1971 and three instances where he met him in 73. So I just went with the one that had the majority. Um, but whenever I could, I pinpointed, interviews and things like that in any event um so he met with anger he you know they both had a mutual interest in the occult and alistair crowley and he said yeah I'll, I'll i'll come up with some music for you for whatever reason um you know it was a gentleman's agreement jimmy never you know signed a contract but um he was touring the world and he eventually became hooked on you know heroin uh, did many other drugs as well, had a lot of fun, um, and um, just never got to the music. He ended up producing, Jimmy said in an interview, 31 mi minutes out of the 40, and Ken says 20 minutes out of the 40. Right. Who knows? So right. two, two different versions, yeah. Oh, after both of them recall things differently. I read different articles, and one recalls this, one recalls that. Mm -hmm. uh, but in any event, he didn't get the 40 minutes, and that's what Ken specified. So... Um, what happened was uh, to placate Ken, Jimmy uh, invited um, uh, him to use his uh, editing equipment because he had editing and had a laboratory in the basement of the Tower House in London that he had owned, uh, still owns and still lives there now. And um, while he was touring the world, um, he, he let Ken Anger live in the basement basically and use the editing equipment which he had for Song Remains the Same. I guess that's why he had the equipment. Um, 
And, um, but Ken, uh, Jimmy's wife, Charlotte Martin, the French model, uh, his common law wife, I should say, um, she was living there at the time while Jimmy was traveling and she didn't like anger, uh, but he had ended up giving a tour of the house, the upper part of the house, which he agreed he wouldn't be in. And uh, they had a conflict and then she was upset and kicked him out of the house. As a result, anger was very, well, for lack of a better word, angry, yeah. curious. Because that's not um, really his real name, is it? <laughs> uh, it's Angle Meyer. Yes, yes, Ken, yes. Yeah, yeah. He cha he obviously Angle. changed it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, he threw a press conference uh, and I, I tried to find record of that and it was just secondary talk, but apparently yeah. there was enough evidence that he threw a how do you define a press conference? Get, get a couple of reporters together and just make an announcement. Hard mm -hmm. to say. Um, but he, this went out in the media and he fired Jimmy and he called him a lazy junkie. Uh, and, um, you know, then he said, hey, I'm going to I'm going to curse, you know, Jimmy as well for doing this to me. You know, and Jimmy strung him along for how many mm -hmm. years he didn't he didn't fulfill his commitment. And, and you know, Zeppelin fans and, and, and I, I think Jimmy's a musical genius. I, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a Zeppelin fan. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not going to say he's faultless. Nobody is. But he, he really didn't produce the music for Ken. And Ken's not as much of a, um, he's a bit of a creepy dude. So people are going to side with Jimmy. So in any event, um, yeah, he said he cursed Jimmy and, and Led Zeppelin. And then, you know, all sorts of things started to happen. Maybe not in the trajectory of a traditional, oh, well, he cursed him. The guy's still alive and he's rich. So obviously it didn't work. But um, you know, there's a bit more to it than that. So was this curse just specifically for Jimmy, or are you saying it, it was for all, all of the band, Led Zeppelin? Uh, well, from what I understand, uh, Ken said he put the curse of King Midas on Jimmy, and that's, um, it's based on the fact that, you know, the ancient story of King Midas, everything he touched turned to gold. Um, yeah. but, but it left him, I think he, he, you know, touched his daughter and his daughter turned to gold, and he realized that, you know, having all the gold is, you know, well, what's the point of it? Mm. So it's meant to, to make someone rich, but creatively impotent or ill. Mm. Um, so if, if, you know, people just kind of, you know, gloss over and just say, well, Jimmy didn't die in a car crash or whatever. So he's, the curse didn't work, but it took away what Jimmy loved the most. And that was his band. Um, ultimately, you know, kind of going after uh, Robert Plant with his tragedies and then John Bonham, you know, killing himself with alcohol. Uh, mm. ultimately the band announced that's it we're finished um and um so in a way if you look at the curse itself it, it did work sure jimmy's wealthy but but mm. his post Zeppelin career wasn't all that fruitful if you look at um what robert plant's done and what john paul jones has done jimmy's kind of had these like stops and starts uh he's champing at the bit to go touring again robert plant will not do it he had, wants nothing to do with that um, and John Paul Jones seems like he'd, he'd be happy to do it if the other guys are on board. But yeah, um, yeah so if you look at it that way, um, it looks like the curse did work in, in its own way. But, but there are those that are going to have their stance. It didn't, no matter what you say or what, you know, I wouldn't call it evidence, but whatever angle you, that you, you know, can portray, they'll say, well, that's nonsense. He's wealthy and he's got a 30 year old girlfriend and he's 70, you know, something years old. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the the idea of, of this curse, uh, you're you're saying in the book that it, it affected the other members of, of Led Zeppelin, especially Robert Plant and his family, because obviously they had this car crash in 1975, I think it was, in, in Greece. And and then obviously the tragedy of, of Robert Plant's son dying. But in a way, Jimmy Page didn't seem to get come off that badly, really, compared to Robert Plant. But, you know, from a... A sort of skeptic's point of view would you, could people say that it's just bad luck that's happened happened to rob plant uh abs absolutely i i, I would mm. totally uh, agree with that stance it's quite possible i mean if, if you you know take a snapshot of any anyone's life someone not in the public eye things do happen um you know might, one might call them tragedy or bad luck or what mm. have you so you could just say like some people say life in the fast lane you know drugs and fast living um and you know these things happen car accident you know, unfortunate, you know, tragedies, that's not all, all that uncommon. Mm. Uh, so yeah, one could easily argue that it was, had nothing to do with the curse. Um, but then again, if someone has had a public, you know, curse on them and, and certain events do occur, then, 
and, and there were some other peripheral deaths as well people connected to the band yeah um and jimmy jimmy knew enough to i i, I think he, he knew enough to try and protect himself and i yeah. i think there was some sort of a ricochet effect where ultimately yeah. it did get, it did get to him but but things of that nature don't have a, a straight line path and it might mm. not always work out exactly the way that one would intend them. It's not just a matter of you throw a baseball, it goes through a window, it breaks the window. It's not a, a straight path. Uh, so I, I think something like that, you just don't know what, what's going to happen. And Ken just kind of threw it out there to see what would what would occur, or, you know, eventuate at some point. And, you know, it, it seemed to do the trick for him. Yeah, because obviously I've, I've been reading um, Chris Salovich's book on Jimmy Page. I don't know if you've read that book, which is sort of like a, a full biography. And the way, way it pans out is that obviously Jimmy had quite a lot of problems with drink and drugs and everything, and especially in the 80s. And whereas, as you say, Robert Plant had a very successful solo career, but Jimmy Page struggled to, to get, make things happen, really. And he did The Firm and he did sort of solo albums, but he didn't have half as much success but nowadays he seems to have, have come through and seen seen in the news recently like he, he spoke to the Oxford Union in England and he looked very well and happy and healthy and everything so would you say the curse might have sort of finished by now or or is it something that still goes on? I, I think the, I mean the, what Ken wanted to do is take away what he loved the most and Jimmy's still there's always this back and forth in the press between Robert and Jimmy about, you know, touring mm. again. And, and, and Jimmy's made it very clear that he wants to, to relive the old days. He wants to, you know, to, to form as, as, excuse me, form as Led Zeppelin again. And Robert d doesn't want to do that. And that's, that's, you know, frustrated Jimmy. I think they both put on a public, you know, friendliness, you know, with their relationship, you know, just, and, and because they have such a, you know, literally as a type of marriage, working with someone for, for those, you know, for that long, um, but I, but I think there's definitely an underlying, uh, antagonism between them that they try and keep under wraps. And some of it kind of comes out, you know, in comments, one of the other makes, um, but, uh, I mean, th they're not touring again. The, the one thing that, that Jimmy loved the most was I think taken away with, which was the band that he formed that he mm. created. Um, but I mean, is the, did the curse work or has it stopped? It, it's really hard to say. And, um, I mean, we, we don't really know. You know, I mean, Ken Anger's still alive. Uh, mm. He's very scary looking at the moment. He's 94, he's not quite lucid, but um, it's really hard to define. I mean, all we can say is he, he said he did a curse and, and certain events occurred. And mm. um, you know, Led Zeppelin still hasn't come back as a, so many, like the Rolling Stones, for instance, still touring. And, yeah, and the and, Who and, 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 and so, yeah. Being creative, um, but Zeppelin just stopped in 1980, so. It's it's tough to say, but it's it's a compelling subject, you know. Regardless, and I just hope people look at it that way. It's just yeah. interesting to have mm. a look at, and then you mm. you draw your own conclusions. And that's all you can do. Yeah, because I, I don't think you mentioned in the book, but in in the UK tabloid press, uh, he Jimmy Page pops up sort of in the last few years with his next door neighbour Robbie Williams. I don't know if you've come across that story oh, yeah, before, yeah, and absolutely. and Robbie Williams wants to do all these extensions and alterations his house and, and Jimmy doesn't want it and is a bit afraid of the vibrations affecting the foundations of his house and so on. So, you know, that that I don't know if that's finished or settled, but it, it does sort of come up from time to time in, in British newspapers, yeah. It's a good observation, Mark, because, yeah. I mean, if people are going to believe what they want to believe and, and you know, um, yeah, I think it's... It, it, you know, the, that energy or whatever you want to call it, the vibes, you know, little, little things pop up now and again for, for Jimmy, frustrating things like that, and a little bit of drama that does leak into the press. But if you think about it, we, we don't know what, what his day-to-day -day life is like. We don't know what goes on in his mind, um, mm. what he dreams about, you know, all those little things that make up someone's day-to-day, -day, you know, whether or not yeah. they're happy. He, he looks great. He looks healthy, despite, you know, all the, the drugs he get into. Yeah. Uh, he's obviously still wealthy. Um, but, you know, maybe in a, from a creative perspective, he's, you know, kind of sputtering, um, but we don't know what, what his day-to-day -day, um, state of mind is. And, you know, uh, they say peace of mind is the most valuable thing. He might be quite unhappy and, and mm. nobody knows it or sees it. Who, who knows for sure? And mm. I'm not just trying to come up with that to justify, you know, any no, type no. of curve. Mm. But there are those little things aside from the fiery car crash or the dramatic thing that we see in the press. Um, 
that you just you just don't know and and you know some say hey if, if someone's living a long life and they're unhappy um who's to say that you know we, we call the ultimate you know thing death is the, the worst thing of all and thing to avoid but you know it could could be a long unhappy life could be just as mm -hmm. damaging mm -hmm. even though he's got mega bucks and everybody thinks that's the, the answer to, to to all life's ills mm -hmm. but it's all yeah. all perspective i think and, and just how someone wants to look at that yeah i take it you haven't heard anything from jimmy page about the book at all or anything like that wow you know it's funny because he's quite a, a litigious person if that's the right word um he you know will sue somebody at the drop of a hat and um i book's been out close to four years and mm. he's known to keep track of anything with the zeppelin name on it that's not yeah, licensed yeah. you know and and um i've never heard from his lawyers at all and, and that was a concern at the beginning yeah his sure girlfriend, uh is a poet scarlet sabet and yeah. she's um I followed her on Twitter and Instagram, and um, I know that she controls her own accounts, and she's definitely acknowledged a couple of my posts. She doesn't interact with me at all. No, no. Um, mm. But but I, I know she's aware of the book, and I'm mm. sure that she's she's always with she's glued to Jimmy. So I'm sure she showed him, hey, this book, and and I can't help but wonder. You know, I've had many sales in the UK. Um, mm. I'm quite sure Jimmy has read the book. I'm sure he's out of curiosity. He's been a yeah, sure, time. yeah, yeah. You know, that time, and, and it's not a long book. So, mm. you know, if it really upset him, I think you know, would he start launch a legal storm? Um, but also, someone like that knows that you know he's in the public eye. Um, mm. it, to 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 try and and cause any legal trouble is going to draw more attention to the book. So why would he want to do that either? Yeah, yeah, um, sure, yeah. But. I can only hope that he he liked my perspective on the occult. My mm. I, I didn't dramatize things or come at it from no. a, you know this crazy you know tabloidy viewpoint. So maybe he liked it and just left it alone. And mm. I, I like to think that's the case because it's, yeah. it's just a neat subject, and I wanted to give it as much respect as I could without being you know dramatic about it or portraying it in in a way that most people would without really learning about it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um before we finish because obviously you, you know explain very pretty well what the book's about and so on um you do mention in the book quite a bit about led zeppelin lyrics and and um the idea of the the back masking on stairway to heaven How, what, what's your take on that do you think that's real or is it just in the people's imagination oh that's a good one mark yeah <laughs> it's really tough to say because mm. I think once once you start listening to something with the intention of hearing something, mm. that your mind can play tricks on you. And depending on your subconscious perspective on it already, mm. um, you know, if you want to hear things, you're going to hear them. And if you don't, you're not going to. Um, and um, I mean, the, the whole back, back masking thing has been around quite a while yeah. um, in regards to what can be done with it. So. And, and some speculate it was a clever ploy on Peter Grant's part, their manager, you know, to, mm. to you know, see this mystique developing with the occult and let's play upon that. To, yeah, uh, yeah. To, to, so it's impossible to say, I, I wouldn't go on one side of the fence or the other, because mm. um, once you listen to something with the intention of hearing or not hearing, your own subconscious bias is going to play mm. into that. So it's really hard to say. The last thing I want to do is be one of these people that say it's absolutely true and you have to mm. listen to it. And, yeah. it. and if you don't want to hear it, then nah, everyone has mm. their own opinion on mm. these things. Because obviously, um, some of the lyrics, especially like "Houses of the Holy," they they do sort of mention the devil or Satan and so on. But so did Black Sabbath or or um, the Rolling Stones, for instance, as well. So it's you know possibly a thing that groups did in the seventies, certainly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I think Jimmy just took it to another level, but he he's a naturally um, you know very intellectual, and which is not to say the other guys aren't. Um, mm. But he's just he really digs into things, and he's a philosophical type of character that really likes to study things, and that's just his nature. So he took it to another level, whereas these other groups might have just kind of glossed over the surface with the whole, you know, wearing crosses and things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas he really studied it, and he he really kept quiet in the press as much as he could about his interest, and he was very wise about that because everyone just kind of takes bits and pieces of what you say and, and they yeah. misinterpret yeah. you, and I know that frustrates him. So that's, mm. he only mentioned talismanic magic, which is just charging objects, you know, with mm. positive or negative intent or whatever. That's the only thing I, I could ever find that he mentioned in the press. 
uh, in regards to what he did, you know, uh, occult or magic wise. And that's the, that's it. And he otherwise kept quiet about it. And that's, that's, that's very wise. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll, I'll sort of tie it up now, but one final question. Has your viewpoint changed at all since you published the book about, about this curse or, or do you still sort of think it's, you know, exactly the same if, if you like, since, since when you first wrote it? Uh, I think, I think it's, it's, um, the, the jury's still out, Mark. I think, um, you know, Ken, Ken and Jimmy are both, you know, still alive. And, um, you know, I just kind of like to, to, to every now and again, do a search on Jimmy, see what's up with him, what's up with Ken and, mm. and let, let's see where things go. But, um, I, honestly, I, I wish them both all the best. I, I hope, you know, if they're both happy in their day-to-day -day lives behind closed doors, that's what matters the most. Um, all I know is that Ken said he did a curse and certain things did happen. And then all we can do is piece things together and, and, you know, fill in the gaps with, you know, with interpretation. Um, yeah. But um, you, you never know, uh, quite honestly, I, I mean, whether it's over or not, it's really hard to say. I think things like that, they go into stasis. Um, and it's almost like, you know, if you add a bit of water to them, you know, and the water might be focus or energy, and then all of a sudden they, act, they activate again. Um, but, but um, yeah, yeah, I think the jury's still out on all of that. But yeah, I wish them both all the best. It's just a really a neat piece of history that has little. Yeah, that yeah, so, sort happen. of an unusual angle on the group, certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And I see you've got a, a T-shirt with with the cover of the book on. And yeah, the only I, one. <laughs> I don't know if you've got to pit, hold the book up so everyone can see it. So yeah, that's what it, that's what it looks right like, right. the Led Zeppelin curse. Yeah. And where can people buy this if they they want to take it further and find out a bit more about it? Uh, so uh, it's available on um, Kindle, Amazon.com, uh, uh, Amazon.uk, just just about anywhere. Um, and uh, yeah, paperback or Kindle. And um, yeah, just I think it's a it, if you're interested in in music or legends or you know urban legends stuff like that, you know, or specifically Zeppelin, it's it's a fun read if as long as you approach it, um, you know, you know, objectively. Just it's just it's just for fun. And by fun, I mean out of curiosity i don't try to convince anyone of anything you know you can take it or leave it it's just something neat to write about however there are still some people that will read it and say well you haven't convinced me and it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah just, it, it was just it was interesting to write about and uh, i'm glad people in, enjoy it you know by and large yeah okay all right well thanks very much lance for for the interview and explain about the book and everything and wish you well for the future and and um see what happens next Thanks very much. I really appreciate that, Mark. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Cheers.